This conference will now be recorded. So in the previous session, we have discussed about various use cases and we have discussed the various iterative statements provided by Apex programming and how to use each and every iterative statement we have discussed and the syntax of each iterative statement and the execution flow of each iterative statement we have discussed along with some practical use cases as well. So now today we'll see how can we use that arrays. Okay, how can we use this arrays? And we have to understand what exactly an array and what it represents, how to define the arrays in Apex programming and how to manage the elements inside the array. And upon defining the array, what will happen behind the screen? And how can we store some elements inside this array? How to get the elements from the array? What are the various ways to define and to initialize the array with the respective elements, which we will see practically today. Now, first of all, we have to understand what exactly an array here. So what did you understood with this word? array collection of elements are having same data type okay fine right so now for example let's see assume that i'm defining a variable integer customer code so whenever I'm designing, defining a variable with the name customer code of type integer, what it indicates? This statement will inform to the Apex compiler. This statement will indicate to the Apex compiler, dear compiler, user has defined a variable with the name customer code, which will be of type integer. So please reserve the required amount of memory for this variable. Then what the compiler will do, compiler will go to this variable, it will check what is the data type of this variable here. Now for this variable, the data type is integer. For integer data type, how much memory will be getting reserved? 4 bytes, right. So in this case, immediately the compiler is going to be reserving 4 bytes of memory. It will reserve 4 bytes of memory. So this is the four bytes. This is the four bytes of memory has been reserved. Now this memory will be pointing to this variable. This memory will be pointing to the variable. In this memory, what is the default value stored by Salesforce? Null, okay, null. By default, Salesforce will store the default value as null. So this is a background functionality that already we know. So whenever I'm defining a variable, now this statement will inform to the Apex compiler, dear compiler, user has defined a variable with the name customer code, which is of type integer. So please reserve four bytes of memory and then point that memory location to this variable. Now the compiler is going to be reserving this four bytes of memory. This memory will be allocating to that respective variable. Okay, clear up to this one now. So once the variable has been defined, then how can we store the values here? How can we store the value? I'm assigning some value for this variable, like customer code equals to, I'm assigning some 450023. This is the customer code. Assume that this is the customer code, which I would like to store inside my variable. Now, what is the meaning of this statement now? What is the meaning of this statement? This statement will inform to the Apex compiler, dear compiler, user has assigned the value 450023 for the variable customer code. 
so for the customer code variable whatever the memory has been reserved in that memory please store this value over here is the meaning of this statement inside that memory location please store this value now then what it will do it will store this value so whatever the value that we have this value will be storing inside that memory now already it is having the value what null whenever i'm measuring the new value the previous value will be getting erased the new value will occupy that memory space that means it will overwrite the previous value as part of this okay allocating that variable so whenever we are assigning some new value the previous value will be getting overridden with the new value automatically by default now for example after writing few more lines of code i'm assigning one more value customer code equals to 900 okay 912 900 912 i have assigned a different value here now tell me what it will do now it will, it will replace, replace right See, right so in this case it will collect the new value the new value will be replacing inside that memory location so already that memory will be holding the value 45023 that value will be getting replaced with the new value automatically by default that means what whenever i am assigning a value for the variable whatever the previous value that we have in the memory that value will be getting overridden with new value so the new value will replace with the old value sorry the old value will replace with new value automatically here okay the old value will be lost and the new value will occupy that memory space now for example after writing few more lines of code i'm assigning one more value customer code equals to some 800 okay 349 now whenever i'm assigning this value what will happen this new value will overwrite previous value again here now this new value will be overriding previous value that means what if it is a normal variable whenever i'm defining a normal variable a variable can store how many values only one it can store only single values here at a time the variable can hold only one value when we try to assign a new value previous value will be lost the new value will occupy that memory space automatically because whenever we are defining the variable only four bytes of memory will be getting reserved in that four bytes only one value can be stored not multiple values so that here your variable can hold only one value at a time when we try to assign the new value the new value will overrides the old value automatically now but my requirement is not only storing one value i want to store multiple values within a single variable as of now the variable is holding only one value when we assign the new one previous value will lost new value will occupy that space but now i want a variable which can hold multiple values also a group of values also at that time we are using the help of a feature called as arrays so what do you mean by array array is nothing but a variable which can store a group of elements okay which can store a group of values those values are called as elements simply we can say them as array elements now so in this case as part of this okay customer code i am having multiple customer codes are available this one this one this one yeah so multiple customer codes are available now tell me these values will be of same data type or not yes in this case each of them defining these three values by defining three separate variables we can combine all these customer codes into a single variable itself with the help of array so array allows us to store a collection of homogeneous elements homogeneous means what same data type okay homogeneous in the sense same data type elements so array allows us to store a group of homogeneous elements inside this not only one multiple elements also we can store inside this array but array doesn't supports heterogeneous element heterogeneous means what different types of elements like one integer one string one boolean one id like that here it won't support different types of elements always we can store a collection of elements of type same data type that means homogeneous elements 
okay understood the concept now this is the functionality okay for which we are going for arrays whenever if you want to store some group of elements like if you want to store a collection of record ids if you want to store a group of customer codes if you want to store a group of country names if you want to store a collection of product names at that time we can go with the help of arrays so arrays allows us to store a collection of elements of same data type but different types of elements cannot be supported by array okay understood the concept now now then how can we define an array here what is the syntax we used to follow upon defining an array now let's see whenever if you want to define an array we have to follow a specific syntax so let's go with that syntax first whenever if you want to define an array we have to follow this syntax specify the data type what type of elements that you would like to store inside the array we can specify the square braces array name equals to new data type here we can specify the size okay here we can specify the size now data type and then we can specify the square braces and then array name equals to new data type of size clear now let's see so now in this case here whenever you are defining the array this is the syntax we used to follow then what exactly is each and every part in the syntax now let me explain one by one okay now this is the part here so now it is indicating data type so now data type here what it indicates basically it indicates what type of elements the array can store okay now it indicates the data type of the element that means it is indicating what type of elements can be hold inside the array over here okay yeah now i'm indicating this now can store so what type of elements the array can store that will be indicating by data type here okay now next one second one braces so this braces is called as dimensions this braces is called as dimensions so this is called as dimensions so what exactly the dimension indicates basically so now this dimension is informing to the apex compiler dear compiler user has defined a variable by using this particular name but this variable is not a normal variable don't assign four bytes of memory this is an array variable so which can store a group of elements so at that time how many elements he is going to store he has indicated the size over here what type of elements he is going to store he has indicated so based on the size based on the data type please calculate the required amount of memory and then assign that much of memory for this array variable so in order to inform to that apex compiler this is not a normal variable this is an array variable so which can store a group of elements inside that depends upon the size depends upon the data type please calculate how much memory is required and allocate that much of memory for this variable so don't assign straight forward four bytes of memory for this variable please calculate how much memory will be required so to indicate that it is using the help of this dimensions okay next third part
third part are mean. It is indicating the name of the array. It is indicating the array names here. What is the name of this array that will be indicating by this array name? Next one. The new keyword. So what this new keyword will do? What this new keyword will do? So new keyword is going to be taking care of memory allocation. Okay, memory allocation. How much memory needs to be get reserved for this variable that will be taking care by new keyword. Now, so whenever you are going to that, suppose for example, if anybody is from computer background, they might be having a subject called as algorithms. Okay, computer algorithms. So as part of that algorithms are using two features like as space complexity, time complexity. So now that space complexity is indicating how much memory space will be required in order to execute this whole okay, program. It may be a simple, it may be a complex program also. Depends upon the logic which you have written, how much memory space will be required, it will check that sufficient memory resources are available inside my system or not, then only it will be executing that piece of code. So that it is going to be reserving the required amount of memory space for this program for the execution here. Now, so now the time complexity will be considering how much time it will take to execute this piece of code. How much milliseconds it will take that will be calculating by that time complexity. Like for example, whenever you are downloading some files into your local system, whenever you are downloading any audio also, video also, it will be indicating that it will be taking this much of time over here. Like as 10 seconds are left, 5 seconds are left. One minute is left, it is indicating the time also. How much time still it will take to download this complete file? So it will be calculating how much time will require to complete this operation. So that they're using two features, space complexity, time complexity. So now the new keyword is purely taking care of space complexity here. So in this case, how much memory space will be getting allocated for this array variable that will be defining by new keyword? So the new keyword will take care of how much memory needs to be get reserved. Then how, may, how it will be calculating depends upon the data type, depends upon the size, it will calculate how much memory will be required, that much of memory will be getting reserved. So the new keyword will take care of memory allocation. Memory allocation. Next. The last part here is the size. Size indicates what? How many elements, right? The size is indicating that how many elements that array can store inside this. You want to store two elements, 10 elements, 100 elements, 1000 elements. How many? You have to specify that size. Not to indicate the number of elements. Okay, number of elements can be stored. How many elements can store inside this array to indicate that we are using the help of this size. So the size is indicating how many number of elements this array can store that will be indicating by this over here. Okay. Now, these are the various parts are available as part of this array. Here. So now, whenever we are defining the array, we have to indicate this syntax. We have to follow this syntax here. Specify the data type. Array name, so the, the specify the data type, specify the dimensions, and the array name equals to use the new keyword to calculate the required amount of memory and the memory reservation, data type, and then size. Size indicates the number of elements can be stored inside this array over here. Clear? Understood the concept now? Now, for example, come to a small scenario. For example, I have a group of customer ports are available. Those are purely numericals. Okay, those are purely numericals. Then how to define this array now here? Now give me that syntax now. I want to define an array which can store some 20 customer codes. 20 customer codes. Now tell me the syntax. Integer. Hmm. Dimensions, okay. Hmm. Customer, customer codes, 
equals to new new integer integer of for uh, two try twenty. So now this customer code is an array which can store twenty integer elements over here. Okay, now I want to store some country names. Country name will be of type what? String type. I want to store hundred country names. What we can do? String, String, String array. Hmm. Country, country name. name is equal to new. String. String of hundred. Right. I have some record IDs. How many fifty record IDs are available with me? Then how to define? Integer. ID. Hmm. ID. Right. Record IDs. Yes. New. New. ID of fifty. I want to store twenty account records. Twenty account records. Then. Hmm. I want to store twenty account records. Each record contains ID, name, rating, industry, annual revenue, phone, fax, everything. Complete record. Like that, here I'm having twenty records are available. I want to define an array to store these twenty account records. The subject, no, not object. Object also will store single value. Hmm. Account, right? Collections. We're using collections. Okay. Account. Now account, account data type dimensions. Now I'm indicating account records equals to new account of twenty. Now I want to store fifty opportunity records. Now, now tell me how to define opportunity. Opportunity dimensions. Opportunity. Now I'm indicating opti records. You can give any name for the array. I'm giving the name as opti records for my array. New opportunity, opportunity of some fifty records. 50. Now I want to store some user records. How many ten user records? What we can do? User, hmm. user records equals to new user of ten. I want to store twenty position records. Position is my custom object. Now tell me. Hmm. Underscore underscore C. Right, exactly. Because position is the custom object. We have to give the complete object name. Position underscore underscore C. Now I'm indicating some position, position. records. Is equal to new position underscore underscore C. Of oh, 20 yeah. records. I'm storing okay the 20 loan records so that we can specify loan underscore underscore C. Now I'm indicating some loan records equals to new loan underscore underscore C of okay 20. Like that here we can able to define that array also. This is the syntax we use to follow. Whenever we are defining this array, we have to follow this syntax. Clear up to this one. How to define an array? Sir, what does the dimensions the dimensions does here? Now that's what I told you, right? Dimensions are indicating to the Apex compiler. Dear compiler, this user is defining a variable with the name some of the records, but this is not a normal single variable. It's an array variable which can store a group of elements. So please calculate how much memory will be required for that array variable. Based on the data type, based on the size, and reserve that much of memory. Okay. Now I will give you the note point also here. Please wait. Now clear up to this one. Syntax is comfortable. Now let's see. So now in this case here, whenever I'm defining an array, okay, what is the syntax we used to follow? We have discussed. If I'm defining an array, what will happen behind the screen? Okay, now let me explain. Okay, now whenever I'm defining an array, okay, what will happen? Now let me explain. For example, I want to define an array which can store a collection of customer codes, which are of type 
numerical okay which are of type numerical i want to store some integer values that means i am having the customer codes customer codes are purely integer values i want to store okay 10 customer codes over here 10 customer codes so now tell me how to define this array now i want to store 10 customer codes integer okay right integer dimensions customer codes equals to new integer of 10 okay now so now here i'm defining an array okay with the name customer codes which can hold 10 integer elements this each integer element is indicating one customer code okay each integer element is indicating it's one customer code so totally 10 customer codes we can able to create store inside this array here okay now so whenever i'm defining this array what will happen behind the screen hmm. okay now for example if i'm defining a normal variable here like for example integer some product code integer some product code here what it will do is what compiler will do it will reserve four bytes of memory right now so it is reserving four bytes of memory for this variable in that memory it will store the default value as null you know this concept over here now like the similar way here also whenever i'm defining an array automatically apex compiler will be reserving the required amount of memory so now as soon as whenever i'm executing this piece of code immediately now this dimensions is informing to the apex compiler their compiler user is defining the variable with the name customer codes which is of type integer which can store the elements which can store some 10 integer elements inside that so please reserve the required amount of memory for this variable so how much memory needs to be get reserved that will be taken care by the new keyword so new keyword will be getting activated immediately here it will go to the data type data type is of type integer each integer variable value will require how much memory four bytes here how many elements you are going to store over here 10 then total how much memory will be required 40 bytes of memory will be required here. so it will reserve 40 bytes of memory inside that system inside the system it is reserving 40 bytes of memory over here so now this calculation will be done by that new keyboard new keyboard will calculate how much memory will be required for this variable so totally we are storing 10 variables each variable will require four bytes of memory because every variable will be of type integer so for 10 by 10 values it requires 40 bytes of memory so it will reserve 40 bytes of memory immediately over here now let's see so this is the 40 bytes of memory has been reserved over here so this is a 40 bytes of memory here it will reserve 40 bytes of memory so 40 bytes of memory has been reserved so now this memory will be pointing to this variable whatever the memory it has reserved that memory will be pointing to this variable here the memory will be pointing to the variable so once the memory has been getting reserved in this memory how many values we can store 10 values because the array size is 10 so it will store 10 values of type what integer of type integer because it is an integer array here so in this case what this compiler will do is not only reserving the 40 bits of memory whatever the 40 bits of memory is available this whole 40 bits of memory will be dividing into 10 equal partitions it will divide this memory into 10 equal partitions why 10 partitions because the number of elements is 10 so it can store 10 elements over here so it will divide this memory into 10 equal partitions now so these are the 10 partitions over here it will be dividing that whole memory over here it will be holding this 10 partitions it will be holding this 10 partitions
now. 10 partitions are available here. So whatever the 40 bytes of memory is available, these 40 bytes of memory will be dividing into 10 equal partitions. Okay, 10 equal partitions. Here. Now, these all are equal partitions here. So now in order to recognize each and every partition, it is allocating an index position. It will allocate an index position here. That index position will be always starting from zero. Okay, zero. This is zeroth index position. This is the first index position. This is the second, and this is the third, and this is the fourth. And the fifth index position, and the sixth index position, seventh, and then eight, and then nine. These are the nine partitions are available. Each partition will be having four bytes of memory here. Every partition will be having four bytes. This is four bytes. This is also 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 four. This is also four. Each and every partition will be having four bytes. Now, four bytes of memory here. So what are the 10, 40 bits of memory has been reserved? Now this 40 bits of memory will be dividing into 10 equal partitions. And then each partition will be having the equal size of four bytes. And to recognize, to recognize each and every partition, it is allocating an index position, which always starts from zero. In this partitions, what it will do, it will store the default value as null. In every partition, it will store the default value as null. Here also null. And here also null. Here also null. Here also null. Here also null value. Here also null value. Now in each and every partition, it will store the default value as null. This is the internal functionality. Whenever I'm defining an array, just by writing the single line of code, okay, this much of functionality will be happening behind the screen. Okay, whenever I'm writing that single line of code, this much of functionality will be happening behind the screen. So as soon as whenever I'm defining an array to store some customer codes up to maximum of 10, then automatically the new keyword is going to be calculating how much memory will be required, that much of memory will be getting reserved. Once the memory has been reserved, it will divide that memory to the various equal partitions based on the size. To recognize each and every partition, it will be allocating the index position. It will be identifying that index position. Now, when inside these index positions, we can it will be starting from zero always. So, to store this value inside this element here, it is having this four bytes of memory location for each and every partition. In this partition, by default, Salesforce will be storing the default value as null because we haven't assigned any value for this. Clear? Now, let's see. So now here in this case. Now, how can we recognize each and every partition now? How to recognize this partition? Hmm. Based on what? Index position. Simply index position is sufficient. Array name also. Right. Suppose, for example, today I want to visit one of my relatives' house because they're conducting a small party here. I know their apartment name. Okay, I know their apartment name, where exactly they're staying. But I don't know what is the flat number here. In that apartment, they're having almost 90 to 100 flats are there. Then what can I do? Do I need to go to each and every flat and then press that calling bell? No. Now, so in this case here, okay, what will happen? We can't identify the people's okay, flat number. So that here, whenever if you want to meet the people, we should be aware of the apartment name, flat number. So directly we can go to the flat, we can meet the people here. So now here also, so this is like as a floor, we are having some 10 flats are available. To recognize that each and every flat, we require apartment name and then flat number also both. Like as flat number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. So now whenever if you want to recognize this each and every element, we require both array name along with that index position. So now to recognize this element, first partition, we require like this here, array name. 
I want that array name. So what is the array name? Customer codes of zero. Array name along with index position over here. Okay, array name along with index position. To recognize the second partition then, hmm. customer codes of one, right. Customer codes of one. That means customer codes is the array name. In that array, it is having so many partitions. From those partitions, this is the partition that is having index position one. Now, to recognize the third partition, we are using the help of array name along with that index position. That is like as customer codes of two. Now, to identify that fourth partition here, I am using this array name along with that index position. Next one. I am using this for the fifth partition. I would like to use array name along with that index position. And then for this eighth position here, now here I'm indicating array name along with the index position. For the last partition, I would like to assign array name along with that index position. So that means what? Once the array has been getting defined, we can identify each and every partition by using array name along with index position also. Both are mandatory. If you have simply arrays, we can't remember that every element partition. So we require array name along with partition number. That means index position both. Whenever if you want to deal with the elements inside the array, always we have to rely on indexes. Without the index, we can't do any other operation. Without the index, we can't get the elements. Without the index, we can't remove the element. Without the index, we can't perform any other operations. So that as part of arrays, if you want to perform any other operations, always we have to rely on indexes. We have to depend on indexes. Without the index, we can't do any other operations over here. Okay? Clear? Now. So now here in this case, how can we assign the values? Once the array has been getting defined, then automatically the partitions will be getting forming by Salesforce by default. Depends upon the size, now the partitions will be getting prepared by Salesforce over here. So now once the array is ready with the required partitions, how to store the values inside this? How can we store? I want to assign some values because it is having the default value as null. In every partition, it is having the default value as null. So now I want to assign some value. How to assign the values? Now let's see. Assigning the values. How to assign the values for this array partitions? Now let's see practically here. Whenever if you want to assign some value, we have to follow the syntax. We have to follow the syntax. We have to indicate array name along with index position. Equals to value. Array name along with index positions equals to value. Well. Like as a normal variable only here, nothing different. But additionally, we are passing index position. That's it here. Okay. Now, I want to assign the value here. Customer code. In the partition one, I want to assign the value. So in the partition zero, I want to assign the value. How can we do this one? Customer code. Customer codes of zero, zero equals to. I'm assigning the value 3400. 3400. Whenever I'm assigning this value, what will happen? This value will be storing inside that memory location automatically by default. This value will store inside that memory location. So now whatever the value that we have assigned, that value will be getting stored. It will remove this element over here. Zero index position. Whatever that new value that we have assigned, 
that value will be getting placed over there. It will place that value. Okay. Now, like the similar pattern, we can assign the value for the remaining partitions also here. Customer quotes of one. So now I'm indicating 900. Customer quotes of two, some 23. Customer quotes of three, I'm indicating some 456. Customer quotes of four, I guess some 1200. Like that, I'm assigning the values. Whenever I'm assigning the value, then automatically those values will be getting stored inside these partitions by default. Depends upon the index position, the value will be storing in that partition automatically by default. It will store the value. Now the second partition, the value will be 900. Next. In the partition index position 2, what is the value? 23. In the index position 3, 456. In the index position 4, 1200. Like that, it will be storing the values inside that over here. It will store the values. Clear? This is the syntax we used to follow so that you can able to follow this syntax here. Okay, we have to follow this syntax. So whenever if you want to assign some value for the variable, once the array has been defined, then we can assign the value for this array here. This is the array definition. This is the array definition here. Once the array has been defined, then we can assign the value for this array here. Next, how to retrieve the element value now? How to get the value? Hmm. Array name with index position. Right. Same. That's what I told you. Whenever if you want to perform any operation on the array elements, compulsorily we require index position. Without the index, we can't do. Okay. Now, whenever if you want to fetch that element value, then we can use like this. Now, retrieve the value. Retrieving the elements. Now the syntax. Syntax will be we can specify array name along with index positions. That's it. For example, I would like to indicate. I'm indicating this system dot debug. I want to print the array element over here. Now the element that means customer code is. I want to show that what we can specify. Customer code of zero right. Second customer code I want to collect system dot debug. Customer code is customer codes of one. Now, I would like to collect that elements over here. Index position of two and the index position of three. Like that, we can able to collect those elements also over here. Depends upon the requirements, whatever the elements that you want to represent, we can represent those elements also. That's it. This is how we are managing the elements inside our array. First of all, as a step one, we have to define the array first. Once the array has been defined, then we can assign the elements to the array. Once the elements has been assigned, we can retrieve the elements from the array by using this syntax. So syntaxes are very, very important. Everything will be purely based on syntaxes only when coming to the programming languages. As part of programming languages, every operation we can do with the help of syntaxes only. Without knowing the syntax, we can't do anything in the program. Okay? Clear? Okay. 
Understood the concept now? Next. Now tell me in this case. So here, what is the size that I have given for my array? 10. Okay, the size I have given as 10. So 10 integer elements we can store. Now I want to store the 11th one. Is it possible? No. Because arrays are fixed size collections. Arrays are fixed size collections. Upon defining the array, compulsorily we have to specify the size. If you are not giving the size, then code will not be getting compiled. It will show the compilation error too. So that upon defining the array, we have to indicate the size so that arrays are purely fixed size collections. So now because arrays are purely supporting static memory allocation, upon defining the array itself, memory will be getting reserved so that here array size cannot grow, cannot shrink at runtime. time. That size will be fixed. So now in future, if you want to add some more elements, it won't support. Now, in this case here, let's see. What is the size of my array now? 10. How many elements are stored over here as of now? Five elements Four. are stored. Then what about the remaining five elements memory here? 20 bytes of memory I have used. What about the remaining 20 bytes of memory? Waste. Okay. It's a waste of memory. This is a problem. Inside this array, arrays are causing memory wastage because arrays are purely supporting static memory allocation. Upon defining that variable, upon defining the array itself, memory will be getting reserved. You may use, you may not use. Okay, it's secondary thing. So now as a developer, you have defined an array. As a compiler, it is my responsibility. I have to reserve the memory. My job is over. How to use that memory, it's up to you. If you want, we can use it. If you don't want, leave it. That memory will be waste. So for that reason here, arrays are causing memory wasted because arrays are purely supporting static memory allocation whose size cannot be grow, whose size cannot be shrink at one time. There is no such kind of options in arrays. So array size will be always fixed size. That's what simply we can say arrays are fixed size collections. Arrays are fixed size collections whose size cannot be increased cannot be decreased at one time. Okay? Understood the concept now? Clear? Now, make a note of this one. Arrays. While storing the elements, Inside a variable, inside a variable, it allows to store only one value at a time. Only one value at a time. When the user tries to assign a new value for the same variable, then it will override the previous value with the new value. With the new value automatically by default. Now, to store the multiple elements or multiple values inside a single variable, we have to use arrays. To store the multiple values inside a single variable, we have to use arrays. Arrays allows us to store a collection of homogeneous elements. Homogeneous elements inside it. That is, RS supports to store same data type elements inside it. RS supports to store same data type elements inside it.
Well, defining the array, we have to specify the size. We have to specify the size. That is, arrays are fixed size collections whose size can't be grow or shrink at runtime. Whose size can't be grow or shrink at runtime. syntax we can specify the data type array name equals to new data type here we can specify the size for example i want to store a collection of integer elements integer some product codes equals to new integer of some 10. It can hold maximum of 10 product codes. String array. Country names equals to String of hundred. Maximum of hundred string elements. Record ID is equals to new ID of some twenty five. It can hold now. I'm indicating account records. New account of some forty. Holds maximum of 40 account records
now. I'm indicating opportunity object also. Done? Now, let's see. While defining the array, Apex compiler will assign the required amount of memory for the array variable and will divide the memory to various uh, partitions. Partitions with equal size. With equal size. Each partition can be recognized by using an index position. which starts from zero. That is, each element, each element can be identified by using index positions, by using index position. It purely supports static memory allocation, static memory allocation, hence array size cannot be grow or shrink at runtime. Which causes the memory wastage. Which causes the memory wastage. Now. So once the array has been defined, we can assign the values as below. The syntax is array name along with the index position equals to value. If 
for example, I'm defining this array. Product codes of zero equals to some one, two, three, nine, zero, four, one. Product codes of one. Now one, two, three, nine, double, one, four. Product codes of two. Sorry. One, two, three, nine, double, four, six. Like that, we can assign retrieving the values. We can retrieve the array elements by using array name along with the index positions. As we go. Product to code is I'm indicating product code of zero. like this this is the way we can define the array we can assign the values and we can print the values that means we can fetch the values from that array with the help of this index positions Sir, please scroll up, sir. Done with the seasoning the values part.
dan dan now let's see how can we define an array and how to store the values inside this array now let me show you with the practical use case so let's go with an use case now i'm going to my salesforce org So I'm going to the execute anonymous window now. So now let me define an array. I would like to define an array which can store some five integer elements inside this. And how to manage the elements, I will show you. How to store some elements, how to manage the elements, I will show you one by one. I'm giving the comments also for your understanding, defining an array. So what is the data type here? I would like to use integer one. Integer, specify the dimensions. I'm indicating as customer codes equals to new integer of five. So now tell me what is the size of this array now? Five. Okay, array size is five. Now I would like to know. Print the array size. In order to print this array size, we have a ready-made method called as size method. Size is a ready-made method given by Salesforce for this array. Through that size method, we will know the size of this array here. Okay. Now system dot debug array size is what is the array name customer codes dot size method okay size is the ready-made method given by salesforce now i would like to execute this piece of code to check what is the size of my array click on execute select the debug only checkbox now it is indicating array size is five because here automatically upon defining this array itself, it will be reserving the memory, dividing that memory to the various partitions. It is holding the values null. So that means five elements are available. That's what it is indicating the size five. Then what elements will be available inside this now? What values are available inside this array as of now? Null. Then what is the guaranteed storing null? Hmm. We haven't designed here. Then how can we check what is the practical proof? Now, let me show you here. Print the array elements. System dot debug. Customer codes are specify the array name. In that array, what elements are available? All the elements will be getting visible in a single row by separating a comma over here. Now, my array name is customer codes. In this customer codes array, what elements are available, we can print it. Click on execute. Select the debug. Now it is having these elements as nulls. All the five elements will be of type null. That's what he told you. Whenever I'm going to be just defining, writing this piece of code, Whenever I'm writing this piece of code, this functionality will be happening internally behind the screen by default. You okay, cannot at the time of execution here. At the time of compilation itself, it will reserve the memory automatically. It will store these values as null. Later, we can assign the values whatever you want. Okay? Next one. Now I want to store some elements here. Store the elements. 
how to store the elements inside this array now designing the values how array name along with index position equals to value that's it simple now store r assigning the elements i am indicating customer codes of 0 i am assigning the value 23000 here customer codes of 1 i am assigning the value 900 customer codes of 2 some 23 customer codes of 3 some 1200 customer codes of 4 i am indicating some 790 so these are the five elements we have assigned can we assign one more element additionally no if I'm assigning, what will happen? Let's see. Customer codes are five. I'm giving like a some 900 here. It will show the error message. When you try to execute that, it will show that error message here. System dot limit exception list index out of bounds five. That means whatever the index position five that you have given, this is out of range. We have given the size as only five. We have the indexes from zero to four only here, not five. So this element cannot be acceptable. Now I want to print those elements. System dot debug after assigning elements are. So after assigning the elements, whatever the elements are available, I'm printing these elements over here. I'm giving this array name. In that array, whatever the elements are available, all the elements will be getting printed in a single row by separating the comma. Click on execute. Select the debug only. Now we can see those elements. So whatever the elements we have stored, those elements will be printing on your debug log file. Okay, clear. Next one. Here you can raise the question, sir. How can we print each element in a separate row? As of now, we have printed all the elements in a single row itself. How to print each element in a separate row? Now let's see. Print the elements in separate rows. How to print the elements in separate rows? How to print that elements in separate rows? Array name along with index position separately here okay now right system dot debug customer code is we can specify customer code of zero like the similar way i want to print the second element third element fourth element fifth element second third and the fourth so each and every element i would like to print separately here by using separate system dot debug state
done with this now so now tell me in this case how to optimize this code here to print this a uh, five element values i'm writing this a uh, five system dot debug statements so now tell me when you observe this uh, statement most of that code will be same right up to this part everything is same right yes or no yes so now what are all the values are different here just these particular values are index positions are different except the index position rest of the everything is same now tell me how can we optimize by using hmm, looping statements iterative statements so instead of writing this same code again and again and again just we can use the help of iterative statements through that iterative statement we can execute this piece of code okay for starting from 0 to till 4 okay now now tell me what iterative statements available in apex programming why do why now tell me which one is optimized one now for loop so i would like to represent these elements by using for loop for now let's see print the elements by using for loop now i'm indicating this now tell me how can we write the for loop here we have to use that for first one initialization part from where you would like to start printing this index position values zero till what four so now i'm indicating that integer counter equals to starting from zero so that i'm indicating counter value i'm initializing with zero counter value less than or equals to four and then counter plus plus now i would like to represent this here system dot debug now the customer code is now how can we give that value customer code staff we need to pass the index index position already we are maintaining inside in this variable called as counter just we can specify counter variable that's it so initially counter value is zero it will check the condition condition will be satisfied it will get the element customer codes are zero then counter value will be incrementing by one now the value is one so it will check the condition the condition is true it will print the value of condition customer codes of one and then two and then three and then four once the value has been printed for the fourth index position now the index position value incrementing by one more that is five it will check the condition five less than or equals to four condition will be failed it will comes out of the block automatically here i'm indicating this system dot debug Done? Now, let me execute this. Click on execute. See the results. Now we can see these elements. Whatever the elements are available, all the elements we are able to print these elements over here. Clear? Now tell me, can we print these elements in reverse order? Like 890, 1200, 23, 900. 23,000. I want to print in reverse format. How? Yes. Let's see. Hmm. In reverse order. Counter less than equal to zero. Here I'm indicating system dot debug. Reverse order. Now here I'm indicating for loop. For integer counter equals to what four hmm. counter greater than or equals to one or zero zero because index is having starting from zero now next counter 
minus minus because every time we are decrementing the value by one because we are coming in reverse format here so that we can specify the customer code is we can print the value customer codes of counter so what are the elements that we have inside this array not only printing the elements in the actual format we can print the elements in reverse order also based on your requirement now let me execute this piece of code select the debug only checkbox now i'm able to see the reverse order also like as 890 100 23 900 23000 here okay clear now this is how we can able to print the elements by using for loop in the actual format also reverse format also now here i will show you one more for loop that is called as enhanced for loop here okay enhanced for loop in normal for loop what we are doing we are going to be initializing this variables first with the respective value and then we are checking that condition and then we are incrementing or decrementing the value over here this is what the process we used to do but whenever we are using this enhanced for loop it doesn't require any initialization part it doesn't require any conditional part it doesn't requires any incremental or decremental part everything will be taking care by the enhanced for loop itself here then how can we do this you can now let's see practically here now print the elements by using enhanced for loop. then how can we do this now i am using the for loop simple concept here in this for loop okay don't write anything here just you can give a colon in the middle colon in the middle here for in between this braces just you can give the colon this is the left side this is the right side in the right side specify the collection or array where exactly the elements are available that means pass the data source data source means what where exactly the elements are available which you want to collect which you want to print now in my case my elements are available inside my array where is that array what is that array name customer codes just you can place that array name over here in the right side place that collection name or array name now in the left side here what we need to do is now this array will be of type what integer just to define one integer variable integer i am indicating some c code you can give anything here any variable name that's it done system dot debug customer code value is i am indicating c code. that's it over no variable definitions no initialization no condition no increment or decremental everything will be taking care by enhanced for loop just we have to pass the collection name or array name whenever i'm passing this array name in that array whatever the elements are available it will collect that like for example in this array whatever the elements are available it will collect it will place inside the temporary memory over here it will place those elements in the temporary memory once elements has been placed it will collect every element stored inside my variable here directly we can print it on that then get the second element place in the temporary memory it will print that on the debug log file third element fourth element fifth element from starting to ending automatically everything will be taken care by enhanced for loop itself 
So enhanced for loop is very faster than normal for loop. Enhanced for loop is very faster than normal for loop. So in 90% of the cases we are using enhanced for loops as part of our application development. In when coming to that further programming, always we are using enhanced for loop. Simple concept. In the right side, just you can specify the collection name or array name where exactly the elements are available. In the left side, just you can define a variable of that respect to data type and then print the value directly over here. That's it. No need of definition, initializations, conditions, increment or decremental. It will take care of automatically. From starting to ending automatically, it will be iterating that array by default here. Clear? Now. But there is a small limitation. What is that limitation in this case? If it is a normal for loop, we can iterate the elements from starting to ending, ending to starting. But enhanced for loop will be always forward direction, no backward direction. Okay? We can't print the elements in reverse format here. Enhanced for loop will always, it say, forward only cursor, which will be iterating the element from starting to ending automatically. We no need to indicate where it has to start, where it has to end. That will be taken care of automatically by default over here. Okay? Now, let's see. click on execute. Now see the results. Select the debug only checkbox. Now we can see that same elements over here, 23,900, 23, and then we are having 1,200, 890 here. Elements will be visible. Clear? Now, these are the multiple mechanisms. We can print the elements, okay, at a time also by using this normal variable, array variable, or else you can print one by one by using that lengthy mechanism, or else we can use a normal for loop, or else we can use enhanced for loop also. Multiple ways are available to fetch the elements from that array. Clear? Now, this is how we have to deal with the elements inside your Apex programming through arrays. Now, So these are the various uh, fundamental concepts that we have as part of your Apex programming. With this one, we are done with the fundamental concepts. From tomorrow, we'll see the concept of object-oriented programming here. So what exactly the object-oriented programming? And then what are the various uh, features available? We'll see one by one. OK? Now, so do the practice on these features today here. Tomorrow, we'll see the object-oriented programming fundamentals concept here. OK? Now, and then this weekend, you we can take an off. Saturday and Sunday, we don't have the session. Last week, Saturday, Sunday also, we took the session over here. This weekend, we can take an off. Okay. Next week, we'll plan for the sessions on Saturday, Sunday again. Okay. okay. Is it, is it, also used in this Thank you. Area,